everyone and welcome to week 41. I'm in Stockholm this week for our annual Christmas party or Yule board and Ryan is behind the camera there. Say hi Ryan. Hey Tom. And what I'm going to do this week is cover a really interesting topic and it has to do with something called mid-side processing. And it's kind of a secret trick of mastering engineers. And it's a pretty involved process and, and, and to me it's kind of a bit of audio alchemy. So I, I really needed the assistance of some people that have worked with it a lot. And I called on a friend and also a very active pro user on our forums to help me out and understand a little bit of this. There are some patches I have uploaded that you can use, and you can get them from this link here. They were created by Kurt Kurosaki, also known as Peth, and Giles Reeves, also known as Seelig, on our user forums. Now, they're both quite useful, and I suggest you try them both to see which one works best for you. For this video, I'm going to use Kurt's patch, and I figured it would be better for one of the creators to talk a bit about what they did. So, Kurt... Can you enlighten me just a bit on mid-side processing and how you made this patch? Okay, thanks, James. So I'm here to show you guys a bit about what's going on under the hood of this mid-side mastering combinator. If you're not familiar with mid-side processing, it's pretty simple. What we do is we take the left and right channels, sum them together, and that creates a mono mid-channel, or the center of your stereo mix. Then we take the left and right channels again, but we phase reverse the right channel sum it with the left channel, and the phase cancellation causes everything that's in the center of your mix, like the bass, the kick, the vocals, to drop out, and all you're left with is just the stereo information. All right, then we take these two signals and then process them differently through different EQs and different compressors. Then we decode these back into a stereo left-right mix. And as James will show you, this gives you a lot of flexibility when it comes to putting the final touches on your mix. Okay, so let's take a look at what's going on inside the patch. I'm going to tab to the back, and let's follow the signal path. Coming from the combi input, we see the signals left to right stereo going into this Thor. So left is going into audio in 1, and right is going into audio in 2. In the Thor modulation bus, this is where the mid-side encoding occurs. So you can see audio in 1, audio in 2 are both routed to audio out 1, and the two signals are summed. They're mixed together into a mono signal. Then, uh, on a second pair of modulation buses, you can see that the left and right signals are merged to audio out two, but the right channel is phase reversed, giving us our side signal. So our mid channel is coming out of audio output one, and our side signal is coming out of audio output two. So our mid and side channels are routed into separate EQs and compressors. And you can see they're labeled mid-EQ, mid-compressor, side-EQ, side-compressor. And these are mono signal paths all the way through. So then the mid and side channels are brought back into another Thor. The mid is connected to audio input 1, and the side is connected into audio input 2. And in this Thor, the modulation matrix is set up fairly similarly. We have the mid and side combined. That creates our left channel. Then the mid and side are merged again with the side being polarity reversed. And that creates our right channel. So now this reintegrated stereo left-right pair gets routed into a third Thor, which acts as a special monitoring switch. Then that stereo pair goes back up into our final mastering chain. There's a compressor here which is dormant and it just routes directly through into this maximizer for your final limiting stage. Okay, now let's see and hear that patch in action on a piece of music. Here I have a song which was created using the Record Reason Duo by a band from Ireland called Southern. And you can download the song and find out a little bit more about the band by going to this link here. In the files that you downloaded, you have two mid-side patches to choose from. And as I said before, I'm going to use the one that Kurt created, which is called PEF Midside Plus Veramu. In Record, you should load this into the master section, Insert Effects. If you're using Reason, then load it into a combinator that is connected between the main mixer and the audio hardware device. I'm going to turn off the side so we only hear the midsection as we're doing the tweaking. 
We're going to discuss the very mu and what it does in a bit, so for now just leave that button off. So as Kurt mentioned, we have the ability to work with the mid, also known as sum channel, separately. And I think that this channel here needs a little beefing up in the mids and the lows, as well as a light bit of compression. Now for the side, also known as Difference Channel. On this, I think a little high-end boost and cutting some of the lows, and also some light compression would be nice. And I don't want to hear the mid-channel, so I'm going to turn that off as well. Now let's hear what they sound like together and A-B it with the mid-side processing bypassed and then on. Note that there are some knobs there that control the output gain, comp gain, comp threshold, and the balance between mid and side levels. You can use these as a way to dial in a general overall setting, but I suggest you get into the patch on a device by device level when you're tweaking for more precise control. Getting back to the very mute button and what that does, this is a little something extra that Kurt put into the patch, and it's really quite cool. So Kurt, can you explain that a little bit? One last feature of this patch is the automatic ratio control or very mu feature. And what happens is the gain reduction control voltage is routed back up in through the combinator in order to modulate the ratio of each of these compressors. When very mu is enabled, the ratio will change dynamically depending on the amount of gain reduction. Okay, now let's turn it on and tweak a few settings. Note that this effect is very subtle and really kicks in when we hit parts in the song that are a bit louder. Okay, now for a little A-B comparison to how the song sounds without the mid-side mastering and very mute, and then with it. You drink so much you can, you drink so much you have, I want to thank both Kurt Kurosaki and Giles Reeves for their knowledge and assistance and also patch creation for this week's episode. And I really hope that the topics that we covered here are going to help you get much better sounding mixes and masters out of your productions as well. Well, that's it for another week. Again, I'm James Bernard from Propellerhead Software, and I'll see you all soon with yet another tip. Bye.